Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I want to put together a little video to show how to wire up a motor starter to go on a motor to put a remote switch on it, an on-off switch. Now, I'm talking about a magnetic type starter uh, that has built-in overload protection. This is a standard starter, and I've got several examples we're going to show you. They're all a little bit different, but they all basically do the exact same thing, and you just kind of have to figure out what's what on the different models. And we're gonna show you kind of how to, how to figure that out here in just a little bit. Now, I've been working with old machinery for a long time and it seems like every time I get a new machine in, the first thing you have to do is deal with electrical issues, make sure that it's wired properly for the right voltage. And in many cases, uh, these old machines that I deal with will have old wiring or stuff will be hanging off of it, not hooked up properly, um, wires frayed or the insulation cracking off of it and you have to go in and do work on the electrical systems. And at first, this was extremely intimidating for me. I I am not an electrician. I'm going to put that out there first and foremost. I am not an electrician, but I've learned how to deal with a lot of this stuff and I've learned how to uh, make things work and learn the principles behind it. As far as switching goes, the on off switch, there's, it's really a simple circuit that once you kind of wrap your head around how to make it work, a little light bulb goes off in your head and things just become much easier. And that's what I want to explain to you today. So that if you're having to deal with a switch and get one hooked up, whether you're working on an old one or putting in a whole new system, you know how to make that circuit work and understand how it works so that you can uh, turn your machines on and off properly. So let's start out by taking a look at these motor starters. And um, this is, usually it's gonna be in a case something like these two. This is one that's loose, but uh, I just wanna show you the differences here. I'm gonna pull the tops off of these. That one's a square D. This one here is a modern style uh, motor starter. Uh, that is, uh, this one happens to be sold by American Rotary. Um, and this is what I think most people are going with on newer equipment now. And uh, this is actually the first one of these I've ever dealt with, but it works exactly the same as the old style. Again, this is a square D. This one happens to be an Allen Bradley, uh, but they basically all do the same thing. So what does the motor starter do? All right, to illustrate how this works, I'm just going to sh show you on this one here just to kind of keep it simple. You have on the back back here three terminals. This is your L1, L2, and L3. It says up here on the top, L1, L2, L3. That is your line voltage. So your line is coming in here. This is the hot power. It's non-switched. It's on all the time. And down here at the bottom, you have three more terminals. This is T1, T2, T3. The, these, this is what goes to your load, whatever you're powering. In this case, it's going to be a motor. It could be something else, depending on what you have. So I'm going to show you here. This is a, uh, just a, a meter that I have. And I've got it set on continu continuity mode right now. It's just going to show of a circuit. When I put these together, you'll see this number go up and you'll hear it beep. That's just showing that we have completed a circuit. We have a uh, closed circuit. So normally when I come in here and I go on T1, or excuse me, L1 and T1, notice the circuit is open. There is a contactor inside of this right here that when it is not on, the contacts are open. Power does not go through them. But let's, uh, I'm gonna take and just put this up underneath this terminal here. So I'm gonna hold it on this one and I'm going to manually engage the coil and when you do, notice that it closes that circuit. Now you have power that is flowing through this uh, motor starter. The contacts are closed. Let up on the coil, it's open. Now I'm gonna talk about coil. There is inside of this right here, and basically an electromagnet. When you power it up, there's two terminals right here. When you put line voltage to this, in this case the coil is rated for 208 volts. When you put 208 volts across these two terminals, it creates an electromagnet, boom, it snaps shut, 
and at the same time it closes those contacts in there so that the voltage can blow th flow through. Whenever you release the power off of these two, there's a spring in there, it pushes it apart, it separates it, and it uh, disconnects that con those contacts and the voltage goes off. That is your own off switch. So we'll talk about this section down here. This is an overload protection. We'll talk about that in a minute, but right now let's just talk about this part up here because this is uh, really the on off part. So again, normally this thing is closed, no voltage goes through, you energize the coil, boom, voltage goes through. Basically that is how a motor starter works. The problem you've got is how do you energize this coil? How do you wire it up to do that? And we're going to talk about that next. Actually, before we talk about that, I want to just show you this, this uh, one here. This is a modern style um, contactor. Works exactly the same way, though. Your lines come in the top, L1, T1, L2, T2. So we'll put our terminals on those two. And uh, there is a coil in here. And I'm going to manually press it down. Notice no beep. Beep. Okay. So whenever... The power goes to this coil, and in this case, these two screws here, A1 and A2, when power goes across those, uh, it energizes. And notice right now, the way that this one came from the factory is they had wires that go to L1 and L2. So basically, whenever the power comes on, it's going to automatically turn this thing on. We want to make it where we have an on-off switch that does that, rather than it just automatically turning on. Before we get to the switch, though, I do want to talk about the second part of this motor starter, and that is this bottom section. All three of these have a bottom section on them, and this is for overload protection. Now, anytime you're running any electrical circuit, you basically need to make sure that you're not putting too much amperage to it where you can burn things up. A wire that's going to a machine or to anything in your shop should be sized for how many amps it's going to carry. And then you'll have a circuit breaker in your panel that if the load actually goes over that amount of amperage, that it'll trip the breaker. Basically, what this is is very similar to a circuit breaker, but this is going to protect your motor. And, and the reason that we have a separate place to do this is your, your amperage that you want to have is going to vary depending on the motor size that you're running. And uh, basically what you got are these little heaters in here. On these two here, these have heaters that go across two terminals. That's this little piece here and this little piece here. And these are rated four different size motors. And you need to look up in a chart and make sure you have the properly sized heater in here. What happens is, is when the amperage gets above whatever that threshold is, it's going to basically uh, open that circuit up and, and cause it to trip, very similar to a, a circuit breaker. On this one right here, it's, it's literally mechanical. This thing heats up, it gets hot. Whenever it gets to a certain thermal level, uh, there's a little switch in there and that thing will pop up. And whenever it does that, there's two terminals back here that it's going to switch on and off. Reset it, you push it back down and that should reset it. Now, let's talk about these, little, these terminals down here. This is a switch and it is a normally closed switch. When I say normally closed, that means it's going to have power going through it under normal circumstances. And if I put my terminals across here, boom, boom, you hear the beep. Okay? If um, this thing trips, it's going to open that circuit. And I'll just show you here. We'll just trip one of them. The beep went off. Okay? So that's going to protect your, uh, your motor. If, uh, if you get too big of a load on it, it starts pulling too many amps. We don't want to burn the motor up. We want this thing to trip. That's exactly what happens. Notice that we have a red wire here coming off of one of these terminals going to the coil. And uh, that's going to be real important. All of these have uh, that same thing. You got the normally closed switch on this one is right here. Okay. And on the modern one, that normally closed switch is right here. It actually says NC. Okay, normally closed. This one says NC. This one's not marked, but you can tell it's, it's a normally closed switch. 
The other thing that we have um, on all, all of these uh, that's going to be real important for our control circuits is that there is an auxiliary um, connector in here on all of these that is connected to the coil. And it's going to be normally open. Okay, again, that means there's not a circuit. It's basically going to be exactly like the terminals that are going through here. It's normally open. Whenever the coil pushes in, it will close that and create a circuit across that. Now, let's see, on this one here, here's our <coughs> auxiliary. And we close the coil. Okay. On this one, it's these two terminals right here. And let's do the coil. And on this one, it says you got a normally open. This one's actually got a normally open and a normally closed. You got both. We're only going to use the normally open one. Uh, the normally closed one is handy if you want to do some more advanced uh, circuits. But again, we have a normally closed or normally open rather. Let me show you this. And when we push the coil in, we got a circuit. What I've shown you here is three different motor starters. They all do basically the same thing. A contactor that lets the voltage go through. And we have an overload protection that protects it, that trips whenever the voltage or the amperage rather goes above a certain threshold that's adjustable uh, depending on this is adjustable by changing the heaters. On this one, it's actually adjustable electronically. You got a screw in here. You can just move it back and forth to adjust it. Uh, that's your overload protection. And then we also have a um, auxiliary contact that is with the coil. So when the coil is energized, it, cl it closes the, uh, that contact. All right. So all of these can be wired up exactly the same way, a little bit different, but it's the exact same circuits. So now let's talk about our push buttons that we're going to use here to actually control things. This is a push button station that has a start and a stop. Notice both of these are spring loaded. You push it in. It's a momentary switch. Whenever you push it in, it creates a circuit or either opens or closes a circuit depending on which one it is and when you let up it releases and it goes back to its normal position. This uh, button here, this is another one that does the same thing uh, and I got this one because you can actually see it on the bottom. There's two sets of terminals and this, this switch can either be normally open or normally closed and if you look when you push it there's a little contactor right here. The, the top two, if you if you go across these top two, in fact, let me just show you. We go across those top two, that is normally closed. Hear the beep. Okay. The bottom two is normally open. So when we push the button in, I want you to see what happens. There's a spring in here and there's a contactor across there. Did you see that? You can actually see the contactor go from the top to the bottom. So now when we push that, this uh, top switch, remember it was, it was normally closed before. Now it's open. There's no circuit. The bottom was normally uh, open, which means there was no circuit. But now there is a circuit across those two. Okay, so this, this, this button, this push button station can be wired either way. This one here uh, basically does the same thing. Uh, you've got a start and a stop. Your start button is going to be normally closed. Your stop button is going to be normally open. So now what I want to do is talk about our circuits and how to put in your switches. So again, we got two switches, a start and a stop button. Your stop button needs to be normally closed. Your start button needs to be normally open. And I've got some illustrations here showing this. So you got your line voltage coming in to L1, L2, L3. We show in here the contactors. They're normally open. Notice they're all open. No power is going through. This is your heater block or your, your uh, overload protection down here. And uh, normally it's going to just go right through that um, unless it trips this breaker over here. 
So this is a normal position when the machine is off. Uh, and notice here we have taps. We gotta, we gotta energize that coil. The whole thing we're trying to do here is to create a circuit across this right here. This is your coil. Whenever you have that voltage going across that circuit, it's going to energize that circuit and it's going to move all of these switches, okay, from the position that they're in. Again, these are normally open. We got a normally open one here. We got a normally closed one on the one. The, the older ones don't have this one, but we're not going to be using it anyway, so it doesn't really matter for this illustration. I've got it drawn in here. But normally you got voltage that's going through your stop button, it goes right over here and it's not continuing across because this contact is not closed. All right, so what happens when we push the start button? All right, when we push that start button in, notice what happens. We create a circuit, it goes across this. Momentarily, it goes across this, and this one comes up, it hits the other side of the coil, boom. Whenever that coil is energized, it pulls all these things in, now our contacts here are, are closed. The voltage goes through, your motor is running, okay? So we created that circuit. But remember, this is on a spring. So as soon as you let up on that, it's gonna release that. So how does it continue running when that happens? So I'm gonna show you that. Well, as soon as you let up on that button there, <clears throat> that circuit is gonna go away, but at the same time, and really this happened at the same time that you press the button, and I'm showing you in two different steps, but remember, we, this switch here, your auxiliary switch, is connected to the coil, it's doing the exact same thing that your contactors are, it closed. So now we have a line that comes over here, it's going across that, and that is energizing the coil. So once you push that start button, it closes that switch and the power is just going through there. And then that is uh, energizing your coil and keeping it energized all the time. Even though you release that button, this switch over here comes into play, that contactor comes into play and that continues to keep your circuit alive. So now to stop it, we press the stop button in. So when we press the stop button in, notice what happens here. It shorts out or stops this circuit here. Basically what happens there is that your coil becomes de-energized, pop, it opens up, all these breakers open up so you don't have any voltage going anywhere else. And then as soon as you release that button, it goes back to the normal state, which is uh, looking like this right here, waiting on you to push the start button to start things back up again. Now, as far as the overload is concerned, uh, let's go back over here to where we were on. So as, so as far as the overload is concerned, let's talk about it. We're back over here where the, the everything is just running, okay? Everything is going, everything is good. Uh, the circuit is, you know, we've got the, the coil is energized, the voltage is going through here got voltage going to your motor. Now what happens if one of these um, heaters or the overload gets, starts drawing too many amps, what it's gonna do is it's going to trip this breaker down here, okay? So whenever that happens, boom, all of a sudden this breaker opens up. Again, it collapses that circuit. The circuit, in this case, it cuts the circuit going off to the bottom down here. Your coil de-energizes, it opens up all these, uh, these contacts, and your circuit is collapsed and basically shuts everything off. So this is your wiring diagram. Uh, you're gonna get line voltage coming off of L1, take it over to one terminal on the stop switch. Your stop switch, the other side of that, uh, you basically got two different things going on. One, one wire is gonna go to one side of the start button and you got another wire that's gonna go over to your uh, contactor block that goes into your coil that's gonna open and close there. Coming off of the start button on the other side of it, you got one that goes over here to the coil and we have a short that goes between the coil and uh, this auxiliary line here. And that's pretty much it. It's a very straightforward, three wires is all you need uh, to wire up that start stop button. 
All right, let's show this all wired up so you can kind of see how it goes. Uh, you got a start stop station over here. Start is on the top, stop is on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to pull this off. Remember, starts on the top, stop is on the bottom. So what we're going to normally do is remember you have your power coming from L1. It goes over to the stop button. This is normally closed, so that means it is normally a circuit across these. We have a short jumper that goes across to the stop button, or excuse me, to the start button. Uh, the hot side is coming into the bottom of the coil over here, and the uh, other side goes into the top of the coil. When I say the coil, this is a jumper across the coil. Then we have a jumper from here over to the coil itself, and we have a power that comes off of L2, goes through the overload protection, and then that goes to the other side of the coil here. So when I push the start button, again, we have a circuit. It's coming through here. It's going through here. It's coming over to this. Okay, so we have power that's coming to here. So when I push the start button, it creates a circuit across these two here, and that sends power to the other side of this connector, which in turn is feeding over to our coil. Our coil energizes, snaps shut, and then uh, whenever I release that button, okay, now we basically just have power that's coming through um, this switch here because it's connected. That's going to turn the motor on. When you hit the stop button, uh, we're basically breaking this circuit here. That breaks this circuit uh, to the coil. The coil collapses, everything falls out. So there you go. That is your quick wiring, and that is on this modern style. This is the one sold by American Rotary, uh, modern style starter. I'm going to show you on an old style starter, sh showing how the wires are going there as well. So now we got your old style starter wired up here as well. Again, uh, this is your coil, so we want to try to get a circuit across that. Coming off of L2, go to our uh, overload block. This is normally closed in C, so that's a circuit going in there, and we're power energizing one side of the coil. The trick here is to energize the other side of the coil. So here's our start stop button here, and uh, here we go. So when I hit the start button up here, what's happening? We have power. It comes in over here. This switch is normally closed, so it's jumping over to this side of the terminal. Notice it goes up over here, but this one is normally closed. It is not allowing power to go through there, but when I hit this button, we're shorting it out. The black wire goes directly to this terminal, which is again closed right now, but we got a jumper that goes over to the coil. That creates our circuit. So our power comes through the switch, boom, right there, okay? When I release that start button, well, now, whenever the coil energizes, it pulls in this contact in here. So now we got the circuit coming through here, through the blue wire. The blue wire comes in here. We got a connection inside of this block, and that's feeding over here. So we got our connection in there. When I get ready to stop the connection, I hit the stop button. That disconnects between these two, so basically that collapses the circuit. The power's not coming here anymore. The coil de-energizes, it pulls everything in, it disconnects. So very simple circuit, very simple circuit indeed. And exact same wiring, exact same setup, no matter whether you're using the old style motor starter or the new styles. Well guys, hopefully that made sense. Uh, I know this is, it can be confusing, but once you wrap your head around this, it's really a simple circuit and uh, it really makes a lot of sense. And I know some folks just wanna, just show me how to wire it up. It's a lot better, guys, if you understand what's going on because then you can kind of troubleshoot things and understand if you get something wrong, you can kind of see what's going on and kind of be able to figure out what's happening. Uh, so a little bit of both there. You got to see how to wire it up, but you also got to see why it's doing what it is. One other comment I want to make about these uh, motor starters, because I always get asked the question, why not just put an on-off switch on the thing uh, rather than having these momentary push buttons and so forth like that and using these magnetic starters. These magnetic starters are here to protect you. That coil is your friend. And I'm going to give you an example. Let's just say that you've just got a switch. You just go over there and you just throw a switch and it 
energizes your machine and you don't have uh, a motor starter like this right here. Well, let's just say the power goes out, okay? But when the power goes out, your machine shuts off. But that manual connection, that disconnect connection, you connected it. And whenever the power comes back on, guess what's going to happen? Your machine is going to come back on. That is a safety issue. That's a big time safety issue. Let's say the power goes out and it's out for an hour or two and you're sitting around the shop. You got, you know, light coming in from the window. Say, well, you know what? Power's out. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to clean this machine up real good. And you're over there, you're leaned over, say, the chuck of, on a lathe. And then all of a sudden the power comes back on. Well, guess what? That machine's coming back on and it could suck you in there. It could hurt you. That's just one example. With a magnetic starter, one of these starters here, when the power goes out, it collapses that circuit, the coil disconnects. So when the power comes back on, guess what? Your machine's not going to come back on until you push that button to start that machine. Uh, that's just one example of, of the safety features in there as to why this is actually a good idea to use. Um, there's lots of other circuits that you can put in on these things. You can put an emergency stop in there. You can put lights that come on to show you whether it's on, whether it's off, or whether it's tripped, whether you've had an overload. Uh, that's part of the reason why on this more modern style, uh, we have those, those circuit blocks in there that we weren't using. Uh, you can use those for doing control indicator lights and so forth like that. I don't normally use them, but in some situations it's good if you have a control panel and you want to have lights that light up to show you the status of an individual uh, motor or circuit that's on that control panel. So they definitely serve a purpose. So anyway, there you go. Hopefully, guys, that does make sense. Hopefully, uh, it made things a little bit clearer for you, and hopefully now you can go wire up a uh, on-off switch, start-stop button station on your uh, machines using uh, a common motor starter. And with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up or appreciate it as our comments. And guys, uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.